Out of a tough spot here. There we go. Let's see if I can get out of here without killing myself. Mm. All right. Well, that was kind of a kind of a bad spot there. Well, welcome back to another episode of Dark Water Outdoors. We're here on the Brule River. Uh, chasing resident browns. Looks like this fish. Let's get this fish back in the water real fast here. There we go. Excellent. So you guys saw we got that uh, that one little brown there. Uh, something I want to talk, touch base here is, is these fish are, are extremely finicky and you know you may have five or six browns you know laying in some of these holes but they, they want a very particular um, lure placement. They don't want you just to toss it in front of them and expect a hit. You know that, that fish there I cast in that spot four times before he finally took it and it was it was a matter of getting across the current and sweeping it through and that that's exactly what he wanted so sometimes you just got to be patient don't overpressure a spot but um, don't expect the fish to hit on your on your first cast either Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. Come on. 
Come on. Come on. That's what I'm talking about right there. Oh, good, good brown. My goodness. We have been struggling with this fish. I'm telling you, he's, he's came up and missed this lure, missed three different lures, uh, 10 times, 12 times. And uh, finally, what I did is I imitated a, a dying, a dying uh, minnow there with a little bit of a rattle in this lure. And that triggered that, that triggered that deep strike. This bad boy right here is going in the smoker. I'm definitely happy with this guy. This will be my one to take home for a while. Uh, I don't like to take take too many. They're, the river's plentiful, but uh, you know we gotta we gotta leave some for the rest of our uh, the rest of everyone else. And I hope that my son, you know, my two-year-old, when he gets of age, um, he'll be able to come down here and catch fish just like this as well. What is even going on here? <laughs> Come on. Uh, you can't make this up. That's why we don't cast overhand. I got a little worried there for a second. There he is. Got him. Woo. Beautiful. Come on. <laughs> nope, don't get hung up. There we go. Come on. Oh. <sighs> well, that happens downside about trying not to horse them in and play those fish out and they just they do that death roll and sometimes no matter how good your hooks are you just can't quite keep them on they're fun anyways though oh, there we go there we go all right oh, oh come on keep them out of there little brown oh it's a little guy where'd my neck go here over here There we go. There we go. Uh, let's get him unhooked. Click. So we got that fish back in the water there, real, real fast. Hey, we really don't want to keep those keep those browns out so sometimes it might seem like we're rushing it but we really want to get these fish back in the water as fast as possible and really uh, really keep minimal uh, contact and, and minimal amount of exposure they're a very a very fragile fish there he is <laughs> oh, that was cool <laughs> There was no, there was no defending against that, not even a little bit. I'll, I'll give that fish. He had me today. Come on, stay down, stay down. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Come here. Come on. Oh, come on, come on. Come on, get out of my way. There we go. Oh, yeah. What a, what a nice fish. Man. Oh! 
It is one of those days. Well, we've uh, we've worked pretty hard to get a few fish here. Um, you know, most of these trout are, are they're striking they're striking short and just not quite getting them. Uh, thankfully, that that fish was going to go back anyways. I mean, that was a that was a good native native brown. Unfortunately, it's not how I like to re how how I like to re release them, but. Um, it's good to get that fish back in the water anyways. <laughs>